Glory to God. We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite those who can to stand up. We are going to be opening our Bibles, the book of Psalms. Psalms 46, 46, verses 2, 3, 4, and 5. Psalms 46, Amen. Thus says the Word of God. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried out into the midst of the sea, though this, its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling sleet, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the seed of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Glory to the blessed be the name of the Lord. My God, I glorify your name for the visitation of the Holy Spirit from the beginning of the plea and the praise. And we ask that you continue speaking through your word to our hearts. Give you a blessing, Father, a blessing that we need tonight. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Brethren, the spiritual gifts that the Lord has given to His church tonight, they are focusing on the operation of the Holy Spirit in the midst of the church. God has shown to us what is his desire to his church in those last few days and the last times. We have gone through a period that many believe that is already the Great Tribulation, but in fact we are still not in it. We are going through a period of tribulations, but the word of the Lord says that wor worse days are, are to come. But we believe in the promise of the rapture of the church and of the return of the Lord Jesus. And all of this is part uh, comes from a principle in the life of the servant. What is this principle? This psalm itself that we just read the subtitle says, The Perfect Faith in God. And we learn that what is faith in the life of the servant? It is a firm foundation of the things that we are waiting for and the proof of the things that we can't see. And it is something very delicate. How can you believe in something that you have never seen? It is something that you've if you stop and think, in according to human reason, it would be impossible. But God does not live according to human reason. He lives according to revelation. He lives he, according to a measure that is not of this earth. It's an eternal measure in what God has prepared for his servants. And the word is very clear with regards to the life of the servant, servants that believed in the promise that God had for them. The servant lives in the presence of the Lord, in the dependency of, of the Lord. And we look, look from Genesis to Revelations, all the servants in the past, they, their faith rested on the Lord, but their life depended on, they were on the hands of the Lord. We see Abraham. Abraham, 
He was going after a promise, leaving a promise of God. He leaves his relatives and goes to a land that the Lord show, has shown him. Noah, he uh, was building an ark according to God's commandment. But we see that all of them, none of them has wanted to live according to their own projects, but was God's project, was God's promises. They lived in complete dependency on the hands of God. And today we see many times the new gospel that is happening today where they are removing God from the center of their project and putting men as being the center of all things. Is the gospel that you can do according to your, if you meditate and you, you believe in yourself, have positive, positive thinking and being self-sufficient. Stop being dependent on God and beginning to be dependent on your own effort. Oh, you can achieve anything according to your own effort. This is the new gospel that is being preached. They're leaving God's project, the faith in the Lord Jesus. They're beginning to believe on their own project, in their own faith. But we, we believe that we live, we're born, we grow, and we die inside of, of God's project. But it, it is a death. That's for this life, because we know that we have an eternal life on the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And when the servant is seeking a project, a purpose, in the presence of the Lord, in the dependency, when we open up our hearts, allowing this Holy Spirit to act in our lives, and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide all things, we begin to live the supernatural of the Lord. We begin to live everything that we don't see, but believe. And many times we live God's miracles in our lives through faith in the operation of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives. And the Holy Spirit has operated in many different ways. It's the Spirit's actions, he, the Spirit operates in church, in our daily lives, it's, it's revealing it itself to us. God's revealing God's purpose and His project. And the Word says that the Holy Spirit convinces us of all things. It's the Holy Spirit that does that. And the Holy Spirit, I'm going to share with you a little secret that we have here to the brethren. The Holy Spirit is very polite. It does not invade your heart. The Holy Spirit is meek, is delicate. It speaks in a very soft way, is a special way in, to our hearts. And we hear the voice of the Spirit, and the voice of the Spirit is uh, remarkable. We cannot ever get confused with the voice of the Spirit and when the Holy Spirit reveals Himself to our hearts. When you, we use our human reason, we may doubt, but when we open our hearts, allowing the Holy Spirit to act into our being, into our lives. In fact, faith, when we sometimes climb to the pulpit to speak about faith, many times easy. But leaving this faith, it's not easy. Many times we preach to ourselves that we need to leave this faith so that we may be able to transmit this bless, this joy in our hearts. We may go through many trials and tribulations, but we don't have, in the presence of the Lord, according to our faith in the Lord, the faith that the Lord is going to come and to operate into our hearts. Blessed be the Lord. Let's hear a song of praise.
the Lord has shown a woman. She had a plant that was not growing properly because she kept moving all the time. And something was not done besides this plant not developing properly. This plant might even die. And a specialist in botanics would come close and explain all the details regarding the care that were necessary and how to take care of the plant. The plant was brought near a river and then the plant and they this woman would see the development of this plant so that she could even take advantage of the fruits and the shade that the plant was casting. And the plant is our own life is the change, is constancy. When we place in our lives, our lives into God's project in the direction of the Holy Spirit, we take, we enjoy of all the benefits of the Holy Spirit. We grow, we produce fruit, and those fruits they serve as food and they produce growth to everyone else. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord has also shown the love of a servant. And he's not believing the spiritual gifts. He believes that everything is, is an invention of man. But the Lord is telling you, do not doubt of God's mis the mysteries and the operation of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the Lord has also shown three families that had their lamps filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Their spiritual life had been renewed and the fire of eternity. Bless be the Lord. I invite the brethren to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We praise your name. Glorify him. Lord, for this wonderful invitation the Lord has made for us tonight. For being in your presence. Lord, we praise you for your love for your saving grace that we have renewed to our hearts every day. We praise the Lord because we don't... Lord, we praise you and glorify you, Lord, for people in your presence, for our church, Lord, that soon was going to go to their eternity and soon we will be see Maranatha being fulfilled. Exalt your name, Lord. We praise the Lord because you have helped us to this day. Best be your name for everything, Lord. In the name of Jesus. The person that was going to pray, you can pray now. Lord. We go through difficulties, Lord, but we praise the Lord. We promise for us a heavenly dwelling, Lord. That's what you desire, Lord. It's to be an eternity with you, Lord. Praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Let's pray, bring in service to close. Lord God, receive our adoration our service, Lord, in praises to your name. And may your word remain in our hearts. The praises that have been sang, have been sung, the prayers that have been said, Lord, and that everything may be received by you, Lord. Send our, our lives home with the blessing of the Lord. And that we may love more the salvation of Jesus. I pray faith on the hearts. I pray, Lord, tonight, a renewal. The ones who are tired and discouraged, that you may strengthen them, strengthen their structures, their bones. And that tonight, Lord, you may operate a miracle in our hearts. The prayer that we say, I'm really thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say that a wonderful grace, 
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation and the gift of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, I just want to give a compliment to the gift and everything that was said was actually the discernment that was understood, but there, the, the gift speaks of, about moving a plant all the time. Every spiritual change that is done outside of the spirit never works out. So we need to, that's why she was moving, constant, moving the plant constantly from one place to another, and it would not produce a growth. Because when the change is made by the Lord, with the instruction of the Lord, with the teaching of the Lord, this change produces benefits. That's why the change that has, has come from inside out has to be worked on by the Holy Spirit in every aspect of our life, especially in the spiritual life. The plant was placed beside the river. Very good. And the plant has access to water and just this detail we got in the, the moving the plant from place to place because everything in our spiritual life has to be done with consulting the Bible and according to the will of the Lord we're going now give assistance to the brethren who are in the church and also the brethren who are uh, following us through Zoom, the deacons they are here if you need a prayer by the pa pastors. We also have more deacons and ushers here. We are here at your disposal. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock in the morning, we're going to have our next service as a brethren to be praying for the service and a little detail. All the brethren who have been vaccinated they have the card. They took the two doses. They are free to appear in every service. Only the ones that's a detail, so, oh, my group only in two weeks from now, only next week. But if you have been vaccinated, no problem, you can come in any service. There is no restriction. Amen. And I wish everyone the peace of the Lord.